Hello and welcome! My name is Waldo, and today I'm taking a break from the Come and Swap project to work on this, a 1975 Sears lawnmower that I got for free on Craigslist. Let's see if we can get it to work! It's a Sears LT-10E. It's got a 10 horsepower Tecumseh one cylinder engine. It has a 36 inch mower deck. And I don't know any history on this machine, so you and I are gonna find out together what's wrong with it, if anything. The first thing that I noticed is that the tire here is flat. We can probably weld that back together. I also noticed that the mower deck belt is in pretty rough shape, so that's going to need replacement. The battery is dated April of 2015, so that's a good sign. That means it probably has run in the last few years. It's got a three-speed transmission. I don't have an ignition key for it, so I'll have to hotwire it or something to get it to start. And here's the motor. It's a Craftsman cast iron long life engine with a solid state ignition and it says Timken bearing equipped. Very cool. They sure don't make things the way they used to. We'll see how extra long life the engine really is. Anyway, that's the machine. So let's get this thing into the shade so I can work on it without dying here in the sun. Let's start out by checking the oil. That's not too bad looking. It's, it's kind of dark, but uh, it's oil, so that's good. Definitely gonna need an oil change. Next, we can see what it looks like inside the gas tank. It's actually a really small tank. Yeah, it's not too bad in there. There's a little bit of rust. It's completely dry. So far, this is looking better than I expected, actually. Um, so I'm gonna check the air filter next. It's a little dirty. I mean, it needs replacing, but not that bad. Let's take a look at the spark plug now. The 13 sixteenths spark plug. It's not, not tight at all. I mean, that's really not bad looking. Not bad at all. I'll probably just try to run it with this. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad in there either. I don't see any problems. As you would expect, the battery is dead as a doornail. Um, it is reading 0.2 volts. So I'm gonna throw another battery in here that I know is good. And I guess we'll see if we can crank this engine over. I'm gonna disconnect this battery first because I don't want it to drain down my good battery. Now for some reason they used the red cable for ground and they used the black cable for the positive. Well, I'm gonna find out if there's anything shorted out. No sparks, so that's good. So there's this jumper that was in here and it goes to the to a solenoid there. And it actually looks like it might have been bypassing the ignition switch. 
So I worry a little bit that someone might have already tried to get this thing going and wasn't able to succeed and that's why I got it for free. So, uh, oh, I don't know. That's not gonna stop me from trying. Let's see if this does anything. Oh, that's a good noise, I think. Yeah, it spins, all right, great. Well, that's great news. Uh, so let's throw a compression tester on it real quick and we'll see if it has compression. So that's not great, uh, unless it's leaking here. I'm getting about, what is that, maybe 80 PSI? All right, we'll do this one more time just for the fun of it. And yeah, we got about the same result. Next I'm going to try to put a little bit of 30 weight oil into the cylinder. The idea here is that if uh, I do that and the compression improves, uh, that means that the issue is probably the rings. Yeah, actually, that, worked, that helped a lot. Yeah, so we're up to about 115 PSI. So yeah, I would say the rings are worn on this engine. Uh, now, are the rings too worn so that it won't work? I don't know, there's only one way to find out. So I also wanna check and see if it's getting spark. I did not see the spark light come on. Yeah, so I'm not too surprised that I didn't get any spark because I am bypassing the ignition switch and I'm just sending a signal to the starter, but the ignition is not actually on. So I'm gonna take that apart and figure out how I can actually turn the ignition on. You know, before I start taking this apart and figuring out which wires I need to jump and all that, maybe I should just stick a screwdriver in here and see if I can use this as a key. Yeah. That works just fine, okay. Uh, no, I don't know if the ignition switch itself works. For some reason, that's not working. There's a fuse back here, I should probably check that. This fuse is blown, 30 amp. 32 volt fuse. All right, let's see if I have a replacement for this. Or I could just bypass it for now. All right, so I bypassed the fuse because I don't have any of these uh, old fashioned fuses on hand at the moment. Although uh, I will replace that fuse uh, when I run out to the store. But for now, uh, I'm gonna be careful and just look for smoking wires and stuff like that. So I'm gonna uh, turn this to the start position. I'm gonna see if it cranks over and also I'm going to check the spark light to see if we're getting spark. Got nothing here. All right, so I figured out what the problem was. Uh, there's a neutral safety switch over here. You actually have to hold the shifter forward to engage the neutral safety switch before it lets you start it. And we're getting spark. That's excellent. So before I start this thing, I do just wanna remove the fuel tank uh, try to clean some of that rust out of it. And then I should probably check the fuel line here, make sure it's not all clogged up. It'll also let me look at, into the carburetor just a little bit and, and just, you know, visually inspect it. There we go, all right. Ooh, yeah, mm, there's some gunk in there. Mm, this might not work. I might need to clean the carb.
despite how dirty it is on the outside, it looks pretty clean on the inside so far, but we'll see what the bowl looks like when I get that apart. Yeah, that looks pretty dirty inside. Sorts of gunk coming out. Yeah, <laughs> that has definitely got some gunk in it. It's actually not that bad, but it's definitely enough gunk that I want to clean it up before I use it. All right, so far I've identified two problems with this carburetor, other than it being dirty. Uh, so the bowl, you probably won't be able to see it. There's a little dark spot there, but that's actually a hole in the bowl. So if I were able to get gas into this, it would just leak out the bottom. So that needs to be plugged up. I'm thinking I might be able to get away with just using some JB Weld on that and it will plug that hole and hopefully not be an issue. The second issue is the float valve is stuck. I did actually bend it a little bit trying to get it out. So I'm going to stop using force and instead I'm gonna to resort to using solvents on that. So uh, yeah, hopefully I'll be able to deal with this. Not all hope is lost. It would be easier to buy a new carburetor, but that's not how I wanna do this. Hopefully that'll work. This is supposed to cure in like, well, it says it fixtures in 10 minutes and then fully cures in 24 hours. Uh, to be honest, I'm probably going to give it less time than that before I try it out. So hopefully it'll be cured enough to deal with uh, gasoline. As for the rest of it, uh, I managed to get the float valve out and I cleaned it up. I sprayed a bunch of brake cleaner in it. I don't actually have carb cleaner. I've used brake cleaner on these before and it seems to work fine. Working with these old cardboard eaters reminds me of why I like diesels better than gas engines. And that's pretty much it. I can go put this back on and uh, we'll let the epoxy set and then I can go work on the next thing. All right, let's put this cardboard eater back on. I replaced the lower side of the fuel hose on the downstream side of the fuel filter because it had some gunk in it. Looking into the fuel filter, it looks like it's clean enough so that there shouldn't be any gunk getting into the carburetor. All right, well, I'm ready to put some gas in it and see if it starts. If it does start, I expect it to smoke a lot because I did put a lot of uh, oil into the cylinder, but uh, yeah, let's do this. choke, maybe a little bit of throttle, press the shifter forward to uh, trigger the neutral safety switch.
Well, it runs. It doesn't run great, but it runs. I guess the next thing is maybe I should check to see if this thing will move. And then if it does, I could probably start putting a little bit of money into it just to, you know, fix it up and see if I can get it to run well. 11 minutes later. All right, I rigged the battery up a little bit better so that I can try to move it. Now, it's too big of a battery, so I can't actually uh, put the seat down, so I can't sit on it. But I'm just going to try to move it in like second gear or something like that, and we'll see if that works. Well, it moves, so that's great. Yeah, I guess I should probably get the engine running better before I buy a new battery for it or anything like that that'll cost a significant amount of money, but this is great news. So I noticed that gasoline was actually leaking out of the bottom of the air filter housing. And what that tells me is that the float valve is probably not closing uh, all the way, and that's letting gas continually drip into the carburetor, and then it's coming out and uh, into the air filter housing and leaking out that way. So I guess the first thing to do is to get this thing off. And now I can try to do a better job of cleaning it. All right, well, I took a trip to Hazard Fraught and I picked up an ultrasonic cleaner because I figured I don't yet have enough stuff in my house that's cheaply made in China. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill it up with water. I'm gonna add a little bit of simple green concentrate and throw the carburetor in there and I don't know, just run it for a while and we'll see how clean it gets. All right, so I'm just going to throw these uh, components inside and see if this will fit. Mm, yeah, it mostly fits. I might need to rotate the carburetor around a little bit, but eh, we'll see what happens with that. I did uh, take the epoxy off of the repair I made on this bowl. It didn't set properly when it was exposed to gasoline. I don't know if epoxy is actually supposed to be resistant to gasoline once it's fully cured. So maybe once this is clean, I'll just try a TIG welding repair on this. I assume this is made of aluminum. Wow. You can already see just gunk and stuff coming off of uh, all the things in there. Here, let me get a close up of that. Eventually. All right, it is done. Um, I actually ran it for quite a long time and I also turned on the heater as well so it uh, heated up the solution. Uh, the solution itself is really dirty and I don't know if you can see this but it actually started to take the paint off of this as well. So I think it did a pretty good job of cleaning. With the carburetor clean, there's one last thing I have to do and that is I have to replace this gasket. Now I don't have an actual gasket to replace this so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make one. So I have some cardboard gasket making material here. I cut it out to a size that is a bit larger than th what the gasket's gonna need to be. And then uh, this is a little trick you can do. So put this in place and then you take a small hammer and you can use this to bang on the edges. And what that does is it makes a mark and it lets you know where the edge of the gasket is and then uh, that's where you know to cut. And now if I look on the other side, uh, I actually have a really good outline where the outer part is. And although I didn't intend to do this, there's also a, a marking for where the inner part is as well. And here it is all cut out. Now I guess I should mention, you don't really need to use actual gasket material. You could just take a piece of cardboard like this and use that. It would work fine for something like this. This is really just going to be an air-fuel mixture going through this, so it's not, not too important what you use. All right, well, let's get this carburetor installed, and now we can start it up and uh, see if this thing runs any better.
Well, it seems to run pretty well for a little while and then it just kind of stops running. It definitely sounds like a fueling issue, whether it's something wrong with the carburetor or possibly, I don't know, maybe there's something wrong with this other fuel line that I haven't replaced yet. So it's now the next day and I just got some parts delivered that I can use to rebuild parts of this carburetor. Uh, specifically, I got a float valve and the valve seat along with uh, a couple new seals so that I can replace those and we'll see if those are the issue because I think it may very well be. Give this a try. All right, with those carburetor parts swapped out, let's try this again. I'm trying to figure out where I should have the choke on this. Uh, having the choke all the way out and then pushing it in does seem to start it. And then, uh, I don't know, I think I may have killed it that way by uh, moving the choke too much. So what I did there is I pushed the choke all the way in. I had it running at about half choke. It was running pretty well. I pushed the choke in and it killed the engine. Um, but that being said, this really isn't too bad. I think I'm actually probably ready to start replacing some other parts on this. Well, I bought a new battery, so uh, let's get that installed. Next we'll change the front tire. Um, I actually just so happened to have the correct tire on hand because my existing riding mower uses this tire size. So I'm just gonna throw this tire on. Some of the tools needed for this job include a hammer to break the bead and then some assorted prying tools to get the tire off. It looks like they used copious amounts of some type of sealant to seal the bead here, so. We'll see how easy this is to break. I'm gonna see if I can use the hydraulic press to break the bead on this tire. The trick here is to hit the tire and not the rim itself. And yeah, it's a little tricky for me. I'm not the best at this. All right, and I just destroyed the rim. All right, well, I mean, I can bend it back, but that really sucks.
All right, I just turned my regulator up to 140 PSI. So let's see if this is enough. PSI. The max is supposed to be 14 PSI. Alright, the right rear is also flat. Now I don't think this was flat when I got it, so I'm gonna try to fill this up and we'll see if it holds air. Alright, so I'll probably put some slime in this to get me by uh, until I can get a new tire for this side. All right, for good measure, I'm going to go ahead and uh, throw a grease gun on uh, all the grease fittings I can find. Well, let's see if I can take this thing for a whirl. With the mower running and driving, up next, let's see if I can get the mower deck working. I just bought this V-belt at Tractor Supply, so uh, let's get this thing installed. All right, so I noticed that the tensioner pulley in here does not spin very freely. So that's going to be a problem, so we're going to pull this thing off and figure out why. So it looks like there's probably a bearing in here that might be shot. But let's take it apart and see what's going on. So as it turns out, they don't make this pulley anymore. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill out these rivets, take this thing apart so that I can see what I'm working with in here. Um, maybe this bearing can be replaced. So I got this thing apart, and as it turns out, it's actually two bearings. Uh, these are both the same, it, it looks like, and a bushing that goes uh, inside of these. So I'm actually pretty hopeful that I can find replacements. These don't have any numbers on them, but what I'll do is I'll measure the dimensions and I'll see what I can find. All right, so I managed to pick up a couple of these bearings at O'Reilly's for $9. So uh, let's get these things installed. I'm going to attempt to use 3 16 inch rivets 
to uh, attach these together. And I'm going to stick a backup washer on the other side. Beautiful. And while I have this up here, I might as well remove the blades for sharpening. Not in too bad of shape. And with a nice shiny new edge, these can go back on. All right, and that is that. Well, I'll chuck that up as a success. This thing could probably use a bit of adjustment here and there, but in the end, I got a free lawn tractor and only spent a small amount of money to get it running. I'm not sure if I'll sell this or keep it as a backup for my existing lawnmower, which is about 15 years old at this point and occasionally breaks down. My next video will probably be on Dyno, my 1978 Dynaho tractor loader backhoe. Dyno is currently out of service due to a hydraulic leak, so I need to get that fixed. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. Thank you for watching.